Good day, rookies and hotshots. I'm Peter Delmaris, a student pilot. In my last video, I described my first five flight hours of instruction at the Scout Air Activity Center. Before getting my sixth hour, I wanted to pass my written RPL exam. The world of aviation is obsessed with regulation for good reason. There's also exams and, of course, lots of learning. As I understand this world, safety is the primary driver for this obsession. The secondary driver is technological change. Constant learning is every pilot's reality. For every hour of flying, there are multiple hours of pouring through textbooks and taking exams. In every jurisdiction around the world, an organization is in charge of regulating civil aviation. In Australia, it's CASA. In the US, it's the FAA, and in Europe, there are many, depending on the country. As I'm flying in Australia, I must learn the rules and regulations designed and enforced by CASA and pass its many exams. Each license has its own syllabus, but all syllabuses draw from the same source of legislation and rules. For example, for the RPO exam, a student pilot has to show adequacy on the syllabus in several units of Part 61 Manual of Standards, or MOS in short, Schedule 3, and also know the content of the RPL, PPL, and CPO aeroplane workbook. For the PPO exam, students are tested on the knowledge of the syllabus in Part 61 Manual of Standards, MOS, Schedule 3. All this is very confusing for a new pilot. There are ground schools where a qualified instructor can help students understand it. However, I was too busy with work to attend one and preferred to study at home. So I had to figure out what was needed, how to learn it and how to know I was ready for the exam. So I'll talk about this later. Now it's important to know that I did not have to pass the RPL exam to start flying lessons. I could leave the exam for later and get started with lessons at any time. However, after discussing this with Greg, who is my flight instructor, I decided to pass the exam first and then start with the lessons. The sad truth is that studying and exams are boring. Flying is exciting, it's fun. Many students do the exciting thing first and then hit a wall when they try to do the boring thing and never recover from that. Studying and having passed the exam has prepared me much better for the flying lessons. I've got a much better understanding of aerodynamics, airplane performance and engine management, VFR rules which stands for visual flight rules, meteorology and aerodrome operations than if I had chosen to work on the exam later. I started studying during a very busy time at Tech Explorations. This is generally the case and there's rarely downtime that I can count on for study. I made RPL study as part of my daily work. I dedicated one full week to studying to get things going faster and to make sure I stick with a new schedule. This allowed me to make rapid progress through the basics. Once the week-long hothouse was over, I imposed a daily study of 1.5 hours starting at 3 p.m. At 3 p.m. every weekday, I'd stop other work and start RPL theory study. On Saturdays and Sundays, I did online RPL tests to check my understanding of the materials, and I'll talk more about this later. This lasted from early April, when I did the week-long hothouse, to the end of June. I did not keep a log about this, but roughly this is how I studied. In early April, I spent seven days dedicated to study times six hours per day, so that's 42 hours. From mid-April to mid-June, I spent 1.5 hours every day times five days a week, and that is 75 hours. Total is approximately 120 hours. As part of the flight camp, I had the prescribed textbook, which is Bob Tate's RPL and PPO Study Guide Volume 1. This is the book that I used during my hot housing. During that week, I completed around half of the book, including all of the questions and the mini exams. This book gave me the basics of aerodynamics, engines, performance, and aeroplane systems and instruments. Progress during that week was very slow. Many topics in aviation are not intuitive. For example, understanding the relation between roll and yaw is not obvious because it's not something that non-pilots have ever experienced. Things get even more weird 
when we get to performance issues, air law, and my most challenging topic, which is meteorology. After that first week, I continued for two more weeks until I finished Tate's book, and that's when I added a new resource to my study. The first new resource was a series of online RPL practice exams from Pilot Train. Tate's book contained a voucher for three free tests, and I purchased additional RPO practice exams. I also purchased additional RPO practice exams from Launch Ready Exams. Now, both sets of practice exams were excellent and complementary to each other. There were questions in Pilot Trains exams that I did not find in Launch Ready Exams, and vice versa. However, the comprehensive feedback on every question was a big plus for the pilot train exams. The feedback even provided links to source materials so that the student could see why their answer was right or wrong. With the launch ready exams, I spent a lot of time trying to find, locate the source materials and I wasn't always successful in doing that. Here, I must shout out to Pilot Train, who is a sponsor of this channel. And big thank you to Pilot Train and Jonte in particular. The practice exams consisted of the core of my preparation for the real exam from this point onwards. I repeated each exam until I scored at least 90%. In the real CASA RPL exam, the pass score is 70%. I used the practice exam question as prompts for research and learning. During the practice exams, I looked up information from the printed materials that CASA allows to use in during the exam. And it was a far better way to learn than reading them in these materials cover to cover. For the RPO exam, I used the following materials and all printed as digital materials are not yet allowed in the actual exam, but that might change in the future. There's the ERSA, which is the Unroot Supplement Australia, the Plain English Guide for New Flight Operation Regulations, the Visual Flight Rules Guide, the Aeronautical Information Publication, AIP, Part 91 of CASA General Operating and Flight Rules, and Part 91 of General Operating and Flight Rules Manual of Standards 2020, plus an E6B calculator, the analog device. Uh, this can be uh, a, a mobile phone application or a web application. Most of this content relates to legislation. This is the part of the study that confused me the most. The Visual Flight Rules Guide Australia website helped me there. This excellent resource helps aviators navigate the web of legislation and how everything relates. For example, how do AIP and ERSA relate to cars? You can find the answer on the VFRG Explainer website. I felt ready for the exam when, one, I was able to consistently score around 90% on the practice exam without referring to resources books. Two, when I was totally sick of studying anymore. So then I booked the RPO test at the Outer Cup office for mid-July. In the run-up to the exam, I relaxed my study schedule. I continued studying, but at a slower pace. I also continued taking practice tests to prevent forgetting anything I had worked hard to learn. Interestingly, I didn't feel any stress for this exam. As a student in the past, I always felt a lot of stress before an exam, but not this time. I'm much older, obviously, and more relaxed in general. However, I reasoned that one, I felt well prepared, and two, the worst case scenario in case I failed the exam was to just do it again a couple of weeks later. No bigger deal. On the exam day, I drove to Camden and got there about an hour early. I listened to the ATC on my radio to relax and look to planes. The examiner came a few minutes before the test and set up the test computer in one of the briefing rooms. I finally started the test after some technical issues with passwords, which are typical information technology issues. The first few questions were okay, and I felt I had them. Then I hit some turbulence when I got to eight maximum difficulty meteorology questions. And remember, meteorology is my weakest area. There is not much about this topic in the Tate book and uh, only a few questions in all of my practice tests. And I expected two or three such questions in the RPL exam, but not eight altogether. So that kind of uh, got me off balance a bit. 
My strategy for hard questions is to skip them and to come back to them later. So I'll continue with my test. I got questions about seat belts, which is also a topic of confusion for me for some reason. Aeronautical charts, the same reason. Uh, sensory illusions, which are totally counterintuitive by definition. Uh, takeoff and landing distance calculations, which are nailed, I believe, and glide speeds. Those are the questions that I remember, but there are many more that I just don't have clear memory of right now. I quickly answered all of the questions that I felt confident and spent a lot of time on the rest. And the rest were quite a lot of questions, actually. In my practice tests, I typically needed about one hour and one hour, 15 minutes to complete the 30 questions. But in the real exam, I finished at one hour, 59 minutes, just one minute to spare. I knew that if I had passed, it would be a close call, and it was. But a pass is a pass. So the passing score meant I was free to start flying lessons without the hassle of having to uh, stop and do the RPL exam later. But I have a knowledge deficiency that I must address because guess what? I'll be re-examined on the same syllabus in the PPO exam. But I'll worry about that later. For now, I'm glad I can move on. Fly training is next and I'm ready to add hour six to my logbook. Want to be my co-pilot in this aviation adventure? Subscribe and hit the notification bell to get front row seats to my latest flight logs. If this video got your propeller spinning, hit the like button to share the love and help others discover it. Dive deeper into the world of flying with my extensive logs on the Tech Explorations website. It's your go-to resource for everything you need to know about fly training. See you in the skies. May your skies be clear and your landing smooth.